I mean, there's no doubt about it. This is biased reporting. Uh, let's talk to uh, the boss of Defund the BBC, Rebecca Ryan. Welcome, Rebecca. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, can you oh, hear right. me? So, yeah, sorry, I uh, didn't hear any noise there, so I thought we'd uh, have one of our technical problems, but good to have you on board. Uh, this is extraordinary, isn't it? Uh, I mean, for example, uh, after the BBC was criticised for refusing to call Hamas terrorists, uh, they did concede, our state broadcaster said, it would try wherever possible to call it a proscribed terrorist organisation. Uh, this is what happened uh, in the subsequent 12,459 times that Hamas were mentioned by the BBC. They described it as a prescribed uh, terrorist organisation 409 times. <laughs> so something like uh, uh, more than 12,000 times mm. they didn't. Uh, mm. And you got people like Danny Cohen, former dyed-in-the-wall BBC man, now writing for The Telegraph, saying that he fears, along with many others, that somehow or other our state broadcaster is leading the charge in a, a worryingly growing anti-Semitic narrative. The BBC is anti-Israel, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And this is the thing that is really concerning for the average Briton out there on the street, is that, you know, they are being bullied to pay for this organization and then this organization goes out and is essentially running sort of a, a campaign it's pushing this narrative as you say that is anti-semitic i mean as uh, the quote in that article said that this is high ha high-handed arrogance from the bbc when they just throw away sort of any any um concerns when this is raised but what it comes down to is the bbc has a contract with the british people in order to be able to essentially tax us for watching any live broadcast tv sky sports or what have you they have to be impartial that's what their you know that is what their obligation is and this has just been shown time and time again to they just don't care about it they just don't they've seen government after government just not you know kicking the can down the road and not prepared to deal with it and they they feel untouchable clearly um, and it's really frustrating when it's within this situation, with a, a, a situation that's been going on in Israel and Palestine for, for, for decades, um, and it's such a complex and very heated uh, situation, as we've seen in October with that the, the massacre of over a thousand people, which was just absolutely horrendous. And then the BBC thinks that that's a perfect time to, um, to misreport in the way that we've seen, um, which and then we saw, you know, sort of that, that that kind of heated feeling spilling out into the streets in in London and and across the UK, where people were sort of um, pro-Palestinian protesters were, were were going on, you know, it, pretty much immediately after this massacre had taken mm -hmm. place, and that was all sort of um, essentially cheered on by the BBC, and that's really distasteful when the British people are being forced to pay for this. And the vast majority of British people don't agree with that. Yeah. Uh, here's a few more statistics, uh, you know, in the period that we're talking about, which was subsequent to October the 7th. Uh, uh, war crimes. Uh, Israel uh, was reported by the BBC to be associated with war crimes four times more than Hamas was. So uh, they said BBC, they said uh, Israel war crimes 127 times Hamas, 30 times. Uh, genocide, uh, 14 times more than with Hamas. Uh, so Israel was accused on the BBC of genocide 283 times. Hamas, 19 times. Uh, breaching international law, Israel, 167 times. Hamas, 27 times. Lest we forget, Rebecca, Israel was the victim here. Israel didn't start this. Hamas invaded Israel on October the 7th. We're about to come up for the year's anniversary and uh, massacred uh, the best part of 1,400 innocent Jewish people. Uh, they were the victims and yet basically the BBC paints the picture that Israel are the villains here and Hamas are relatively uh, not the villains. It's it's outrageous, isn't it? It's really outrageous. And what you've got to look at is like the, the BBC paints this sort of black and white picture, sort of David and Goliath. But what it comes down to is Hamas 
knew full well that there would be retaliation when they chose to massacre over a thousand innocent people on that day. But these young people who were just out having a fun time, you know, and then they were sort of massacred in such a brutal, horrendous way. And we saw people, women being dragged through the streets naked, clearly having been sexually assaulted. And it was really horrific for the average British person to see. And then for this state broadcaster that we are for bullied into funding if we uh, want to watch any live broadcast TV, to clearly be misrepresenting it as somehow the evil Israel is, you know, um, you know, committing all these war crimes, but actually it's a, it's a um, it, because because the way that Hamas works, as you say, it's it is a terrorist group, it's a terrorist organisation. But because the BBC chose to leave that wording out, it was somehow you know they were sort of kind of these innocent victims who would you know were just sort of. Israel was piling onto them. And that's not, you know, that's not the reality of the situation. We know that it's a very complex situation that has been going on for a very long time where the, the boundaries and borders between Israel and Palestine has been an ongoing war for, for decades. Um, but the BBC just chooses to, to pick one side over the other, as this report shows so blatantly. And that's really irresponsible. And it's not something that the British people should be forced into funding. Um, I think that's the, that's the problem, is they're in breach of their contract with the British people. Um, and so we should get rid of the licence fee. We shouldn't be forced into funding this. Uh, Danny Cohen, as I say, former controller of BBC One, very big guy uh, in the past there. Uh, he's calling, he says uh, there is now an institutional crisis at the BBC over its reporting of Gaza. He's calling for an independent review of the BBC's journalism when it comes to Israel and Hamas. Uh, two leading Jewish groups, the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism and the National Jewish Assembly, have also called for an international, uh, an independent review. And so has Lord Austin, a former Labour minister, uh, who, as you said, accused the BBC of high-handed arrogance for con continually dismissing questions over its impartiality. Considering the BBC clearly will continue to do this. You're accusing us of being biased? We're the BBC. We're absolutely and utterly impartial. Are oh, you hell? Uh, considering that is the only response we're ever going to get from those pompous idiots, uh, we do need an, in a, 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 an independent review of their journalism, don't we? Absolutely, we do need an independent review. But as we've seen, you know, with the Labour Party, they don't exactly have a wonderful record on, on anti-Semitism themselves. So I don't think this is going to... <laughs> You're right about that, yeah. So, you know, I don't think we can put, you know, put much pressure on this government in, uh, to carry such a review out. And so it will probably carry on business as usual for the, the term of this, of this government, um, unfortunately. And that's deeply concerning because the, the, the crisis in, in Israel and Paris, Palestine, it has a knock-on impact for other sort of areas across the world. You know, it's a really heated kind of touch point between different sort of um, minorities within this country and, uh, and throughout the world. And, and for the BBC to behave in such an irresponsible way and stoke up these kind of feelings it's just, it just beggars belief that they have not sort of thought at the front of their minds to be completely neutral on this. Um, and, and as we said, that that's just shows a, a level of sheer arrogance. Yeah, and, and, and uh, frankly, they're corrupt, they're biased, and they won't admit it, and uh, that is a serious problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Rebecca, fantastic to talk to you as always. Thank you very much. Uh, Rebecca Ryan there from Defund the BBC.